Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. For those that are new here, hey, I'm Charlotte. I am the host of Inform Overload. And this right here is my personal channel. Today I'm gonna to take a little break from the reaction videos that I've been doing and just do a sort of like story time explainer kind of video. So I really wanna know how many of you guys have been following IO for years, like maybe even before I started working there. Let me know down in the comments how long you've been a fan of IO. If you've been a fan for years, we've never really explained why we changed the direction of IO. And if you're new to IO, then you probably don't know this, but we used to be an entirely different channel that would cover completely different topics. When I first started my job, we were much more of like a weird news channel. Now we're much more of like a trending news, celebrity gossip, social media news type channel. We also do top tens, that's important. Circa 2012 to about the fall of 2019, we would cover conspiracy theories, aliens, weird news, science news, paranormal stuff, somewhat controversial. We would also cover politics, but we really don't do that anymore, in case you haven't noticed which I'm not mad about, to be honest. <laughs> if you go into IO's old playlist, you can still see that type of content. Here's a screenshot of the science playlist. Massive asteroid could end the world in two weeks, doomsday. First person ever passes away from vaping. You won't believe this 500 year old mummified girl that still looks alive. Scientists create the first monkey human hybrid. You get the idea. So being a bit of a science nerd myself, I actually really liked covering this type of topics. I was genuinely interested in it and it actually used to do pretty well. I think back in the day when YouTube used to be kind of like the wild, wild west, you could make topics on pretty much anything and make money off of it and the views would be crazy. This was a time where the more shocking the thumbnail, the more shocking the title, the more shocking the tags, people would click on it. And the old IO really thrived off of that type of content. Check out this article by the Toronto Sun. YouTubers inform overload on their way to becoming Canada's next big thing. Another one from TubeFilter. YouTube millionaires inform overload is able to cater to what our fans like. This was kind of like happening during the golden age of YouTube, where you could make content about pretty much anything and you would get monetized and it's it was amazing. It was a great time to be on YouTube. Views were also insanely high as well. Until one day, one very scary day, the YouTube demonetization scandal known as the Adpocalypse happened. Pretty much everything changed and advertisers started to pull out of YouTube. Advertising is the way that YouTubers make their money. But advertisers also found a lot of the content on YouTube to be way too controversial to want to associate with. If you have a brand and you put a commercial before a very controversial topic, then you're kind of associating your brand with that topic. People like to blame PewDiePie for the adpocalypse. He might've been one of the reasons. I think he was more the catalyst. You can't blame PewDiePie for a problem that was just completely rampant on YouTube. YouTube just generally wasn't a friendly place for advertisers at that point. And advertisers started to realize that they didn't wanna be associated with those topics. YouTube execs figured out a way to bring those advertisers back. And they did it using a monetization system where an algorithm would detect a controversial topic based on the title, the thumbnail, the tags, the script. Thumbnails, titles, and tags would be scanned through this algorithm. But if you're gonna put, let's say, a gun in the thumbnail or a title, there's probably a 99% chance that that video will be demonetized. But all of a sudden, all of the videos about, let's say, conspiracy theories, which was what IO mostly covered back in the day, were suddenly demonetized. Literally hundreds, if not thousands, of our videos were no longer making any money. And they also weren't getting views anymore because YouTube wasn't recommending them anymore either. Back in October of 2012, YouTube changed its algorithm to favor watch times over view counts. IO videos used to be extremely short, two to three minutes each, not a long video compared to like what you see now. You see 10 minute, 15 minute videos on YouTube. Didn't exactly work for the new algorithm. And for all of these reasons, IO began to notice a very steady decline in viewership and also the money that it made. We were putting in a lot of work into making these types of videos. We were paying hosts to research and write and film the videos, and then we were paying editors on top of that to edit the videos. But the topics weren't making any money. It's not exactly a good business model. So as a result, we had to cut the number of uploads, we had to cut our employees' hours, and I was the only IO host left. The channel used to have three to four hosts to do all the uploads, and now I was the only one. Just me doing everything. At this point, I was feeling a little bit hopeless, not a little bit, extremely hopeless. I would work so, so hard and make as many videos as I could because we couldn't afford to put another host on IO. I was the only one for months, if not years. I was getting really burnt out. I was writing, researching, and filming five to seven IOs a day, if not more than that. I was under enormous pressure because not only was I doing all this work, but I was also the one making the videos about the controversial topics. And I was also the only one being berated by the YouTube audience. Hundreds, if not thousands of people every single day were commenting and negative toward me. 
and it was a lot. It was a lot to handle and it did take a toll on me. I would come to work crying all the time because I was working so, so hard and the channel wasn't growing. It wasn't making any money and all of that pressure fell back on me because I was the face of the channel. And another thing too, I was getting older. I wanted something more. I was getting to the point in my life where I was getting fed up with having to pinch pennies. I worked very hard for years and I deserved more out of life. It was hard for me to even justify paying for public transit. I would walk to work 40 minutes every single day. I was also acting too at this point and making decent money at it. So I kind of thought to myself like, why am I even doing YouTube if it makes me so unhappy and you know, it's, it's making my life harder. I wasn't even making enough money to live. Like, why am I doing this? Toronto's an expensive city, man. You, you, you need money to be able to afford to live here. So I just kind of thought, you know, maybe I'll just quit and focus on acting full time. So come September, 2019, the channel is just, it's getting worse and worse. I'm talking to my bosses all the time and my morale is really low. And I'm like, I, guys, I honestly don't know how much longer that I can do this. My boss Landon, who's an idea man, said that we should switch the direction of the channel to top tens. At first I really hated the idea, mostly because, you know, I knew the fans would hate it. But Landon also runs a very successful top 10 channel, Most Amazing Top 10. The algorithm absolutely loves top tens for a bunch of reasons, but one of the main reasons is watch time. People watch the videos for much longer because the videos are longer and it allows you to curate the content so that the most interesting topic is at the end of the video based on the top tens, right? You count down. It allows you to curate the content so that the whole video is good and interesting. I was really resistant at this point. I had already kind of made up my mind that I was gonna quit, but Landon insisted and he said, give it six weeks and if you don't notice a difference and it doesn't change, then you can move on. So I agreed not to quit and I said, okay, we'll give it six weeks. In September of 2019, we made the switch. We decided on top 10 lists inspired by the news and celebrities. The other problem with kind of covering this like sciencey stuff is that nobody really comes to YouTube for that kind of content. No one is searching for it and that's another reason why our channel just wasn't growing based on the topics that we were covering. Celebrity and social media content was gonna be the content that we decided to cover because people were actually searching for that content. So we made the change and holy crap did the fans hate it. They hated it, dude. We had so many people threatening to unsubscribe, so much negativity in the comments. It was honestly expected. I know that the YouTube audience hates change because I, you know, I've seen it. I've seen us bring in new hosts and they hate the hosts no matter how good they are. They hated me. Every single day, unsubscriptions, negativity in the comments, but we kept going and I was just kind of like waiting for the day. It's not gonna work, it's not gonna work. That's literally what I was thinking in my head. But we kept going. Landon knew that it was gonna pay off eventually and actually it did, it did start to pay off. About five to six weeks after we made the change, the channel started to grow again. We started to be recommended again and there was a sharp spike in views. By November of 2019, the views on our channel and the watch time skyrocketed. I remember one of my bosses came to me and said, did you know that the views on the channel for November 2019 were higher than the views for the entire year last year? That's literally what happened. In one month, we got more views on IO than an entire year. Like, I couldn't believe it. It was, it was amazing to see it finally get the attention that it deserved. We went from struggling to get 10,000 views overnight on a video to cracking 40,000 views overnight every single time. It was like a 300% uptick. It was working and it continued to work. IO has never had higher watch time either and I'm like genuinely so proud to be part of that channel. I don't cry at work anymore and honestly considering the current state of the world, I am so glad that I didn't quit my job and focus on acting. There is no film industry right now, literally nada. And it's gonna probably stay that way. I don't think I'm gonna be able to go to an audition for at least the rest of the year. I'll be happy if I get to go to an audition before then. So yeah, right now I would be screwed if I didn't have a job. And YouTube is actually doing pretty well in this pandemic, everything considering. Advertisers did pull out somewhat because I mean, nobody's really buying much right now. So there's no point in advertisers to spend money. And also there's nobody casting anybody for commercials. So I mean, there's no ads to play on the content, but everyone is at home watching TV, streaming, watching YouTube. And YouTube's a pretty great job to have right now. I'm pretty grateful to be in the position that I'm in. So guys, I hope that story made sense to you. I hope it's given you some insight into why we cover the topics that we do. I'm sorry if you missed the old IO and the topics that we used to cover. Believe me, I miss doing Asteroid Review just as much as you miss watching it. <laughs> but I definitely don't miss crying at work every day and feeling like the hard work that I do is never rewarded. That is it for this one. Subscribe!